Today, we are going to take a look at 16 tips and tricks so that you can optimize OneDrive for business and be a wizard when it comes to managing your files. Hi, my name's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's nerd out. Firstly, we are going to take a look at three ways that you can access OneDrive. This OneDrive can be accessed via the waffle icon in any of your 365 apps. OneDrive can also be accessed from the new Outlook. We can select the apps icon, locate OneDrive, and then I would also just recommend pinning this to your navigation. The last place that we can find OneDrive is within Microsoft Teams. Mine is already pinned to the navigation menu. And if yours is not, then you can search for it within the apps area here. Now that we have learned how we can access OneDrive, let's dive into two key features that are always available to you from the OneDrive dashboard. The first area that I want to show you is the search bar at the top. Now this is your best friend. I've had so many questions in comments as well as from coworkers about how to find files within Microsoft Teams or in SharePoint. And this is the best place to look for them. So for example, at Amy's Animal Shop, Mike has just let me know that he has started our sales forecast for our Trendy Dog Beach Merch line. Now from this right-hand drop-down menu, we have a few different options for searching. I would recommend just searching for these two. So if you know that a file is stored within your personal OneDrive, then you can search for my files. If you aren't exactly sure where something is stored, then I would just go ahead and select all files because that is going to search for everything. Here we have three files. And if we just expand these columns here, then we can see all of the contents. So we'll see here that there are two annual sales forecasts as well as a loop page, which is great. And it demonstrates that we can search for loop files within our OneDrive. Now for this Trendy Beach Merch Line annual sales forecast, under location, we are going to see operations, shared documents, and general. So if we select this file, then we can open up our file and depending on your subscription, you might have the ability to open this within the Excel app. There are some additional options here, but the one that I want to highlight is this open file location. So here we have been redirected to the operations SharePoint site, and there is that file for the Trendy Beach Merch. And if we select this little Teams icon, then we will be redirected to that operations general channel within Microsoft Teams, and there is that file. Back within OneDrive, if we select this second file, we will see here that that location is Documents. So if we go to Open File Location, then we are going to be redirected to My Files, which are your personal files stored within OneDrive. Now the third option here, I'm just going to demonstrate this quickly. If we search for our whole organization, then we are going to be redirected to SharePoint. And that's because files for your organization are stored within a SharePoint site. So this is going to create a similar experience to searching for files, but we are now searching for our files within SharePoint. The second feature that I wanted to show you was how we can create content within OneDrive. From this drop down menu, we can see that we can create these documents within my files, which we just learned is your personal files within OneDrive. Or if you select other locations, then we will have a similar navigation menu to the navigation menu on the left hand side here, allowing you to create documents directly within a SharePoint library. Once you have selected your location, then you can add a folder, you can upload documents, create documents using Microsoft apps, or even save a URL link, which I think is pretty cool. There are also some recommended templates on the right hand side, as well as some templates that your organization might have saved for you. And if you aren't sure which app to use, then you can just, for example, search sales forecast, and there are going to be a handful of Microsoft templates here. We can see that these are Excel templates, which is an appropriate app for creating a sales forecast. Now that we have learned how we can create and search for files within OneDrive, let's dive into that left navigation menu so that you can learn how to utilize all of the different features effectively. 
The first area on this left navigation menu is the home tab. And from the top, we have a for you section, which are some suggested documents that you might want to work on next. Down below, we have recents, which are going to be all of the recent documents that you've been working on, including some predefined filters at the top. Now, one little handy trick here is this little search bar on the right hand side where we can once again filter for the name of the file or even a person. So by filtering for forecast, I have now narrowed down the search of my Excel files to locate those two annual sales forecast documents and they also include the location of those documents as a sublink below. The second feature that we are going to dive into is my files. Now there are a ton of folders here and most of them are actually created automatically without any effort on your part. And I've color coded them for your ease. So these yellow ones are actually automatically created by Microsoft. So for example, this meetings is actually your collaborative notes created within a Microsoft Teams meeting. These notebooks are your personal OneNote notebooks. And these OneNote loop files are loop components created within OneNote. These turquoise files are files that I have created for my own organization. So for example, we can go add new, select folder, give it a name. And if you are enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up as it really helps me out. We can give it a color and then click create. And there we will see that new folder has been created within your files. Then lastly is a bit sneaky, but it is these purple folders. And these are actually shortcuts to a SharePoint document library. So they are not part of your files, but let me show you a little tip on how to create these and why it is beneficial. From the bottom here, under the quick axe, these are going to be all of your SharePoint sites. If you select more places, then you can easily navigate to your teams at the bottom. So let's go ahead and select that operations team. We can go to the general channel and from the top here, we can add a shortcut to my files. And here is that shortcut that we just created. And under that sharing column, we can see that the owner is the operations SharePoint site. We can select the ellipses here and go down to folder color and update the color appropriately. And let me now show you why it's beneficial to have these shortcuts here. If you are going to sync your OneDrive to your desktop, which we will cover later in this video, then we can now see that general operations SharePoint site folder here. And those files are easily accessible from your desktop in the file explorer. The third area that we will take a look at is this shared folder on the left hand side. And at the top, you will see documents that are shared with you. So in this case, Mike has shared this folder with me. And you'll notice that these are actually within Mike's files. At the top, we have those similar filters that we saw before. And additionally, you can even see documents that are shared by you. So here we are going to see a handful of documents that have been created within other apps such as Loop and shared with other people in your organization. Sharing documents is handy when you have items in my files. For example, in shared files, I have this photo of Rue wearing some pineapple glasses. And if I wanna go ahead and share this with, for example, Mike, and ask him if he thinks that this would be a great addition to the Trendy Dog Beach merch line. Let's now go ahead and select this star icon to favorite the pineapple glasses photo, which leads us to our next section, which is favorites. So from here, we can now see that that file is showing up under our favorites that we can easily access certain documents within our OneDrive. I also wanted to note here that this is a SharePoint site. So if you do have anything saved for later within SharePoint, then it will also show up here, providing one harmonized area for you to access your OneDrive favorite as well as SharePoint save for later documents. Moving along to the fifth area, which is the recycle bin. 
Items within your recycle bin are automatically deleted after 93 days, unless if your administrator has changed the setting. This is for work and school users. There are different settings for a personal free OneDrive account. The next section that we will take a look at is the browse files by. And if we expand this area, then we can search for our files through a different perspective, either via people, teams meetings, or by media file type. For example, if we select people, then we will see that there is that folder that Mike shared with Amy. And if we select Mike, then we are on that similar experience as before. The final piece for this section is this quick access area on the left navigation menu, providing you with quick access to any recently visited SharePoint site document libraries. The final section is how we can sync OneDrive to our desktop so that we can access those files from the file explorer, as well as some additional settings that you can focus on the files that you need most and access them when you need them. To download OneDrive, you can navigate to this website here. I will include a link in the video description, and then you can simply click download and follow the prompts to complete the setup. Now, if you are using Windows 11, then OneDrive is already installed on your PC. So you can search for OneDrive from the start menu and head to your OneDrive settings, go to account and simply add a new account. Once you have set up your OneDrive account to sync to your desktop, then you will be able to see it in the file explorer here. And I just wanted to highlight that I have a personal OneDrive account and this one is associated with the setup of my computer. So these two are different. This one, Office Skills with Amy, is associated with my work account and yours could be for work or school. Now, we saw earlier that most of the file folders here have actually been set up by default and you may want to tidy this up and consolidate your folders so that you can only see the ones that matter most. And then from your OneDrive settings, under account, we can go to choose folders. From here, you can deselect any of the folders that you do not want to show, or you can deselect all of them and then just go ahead and select the ones that you would like to see. Once you've finished your changes, then we can go ahead and click OK. And we will see that this has now tidied up those folders that we can focus on the ones that we use most frequently from our desktop. The main setting that I want to show you here was for files on demand, which is important if you need to view your files when you are offline or if you want to free up space on your computer. So under OneDrive settings and sync and backup, we can head on down to advanced settings. And if we scroll down to the bottom, then we will see this files on demand. So there are two options here. And regardless of which option you select, we can customize it further. But if you need to access all of your files from OneDrive when your computer is offline, i.e. when you don't have an internet connection, then it would be beneficial for you to download all of the files here so that you can open them without that connection. Or if you need to free up space on your computer because having those files downloaded will take up more space, then you can select free up disk space. Sometimes I see it beneficial to simply just free up the disk space and then we can go ahead and manually select which files we want to download. From the file explorer, we can further customize this to our needs. And this little status column here is an indication of the setting of this folder. So for example, under this like, comment and subscribe folder, we have this green icon, which means that those files are downloaded to my computer, allowing me to access them offline. But if I wanted to free up space and remove that download, then I can right click this folder and head on down to free up space. Alternatively, this dog gifts folder has a little cloud icon, which means that it is stored on the cloud and there's no downloaded copy on my computer. So if we right click that folder, then we can see that we have this option to always keep on this device, which will download a copy and sync this file so that we can easily access it when we are offline. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. 
I would absolutely love it if you could pop a question down in the comments below and let me know if you found this video helpful. All right, we will catch you in the next video.